Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and this is Adam Kokesh's historic monetary reform debate with Wayne Walton, representing people who want to create labor-backed local currencies, mountain hours, and Bill Still, who wants to advocate government-created labor-backed currencies like Lincoln Greenbacks and Argentinian bonds, and Charlie Schramm from representing the online Bitcoin backed by nothing money, who's going to spend a lot of time confusing the issue. So here we go, historic monetary reform debate. Not Mars, Greenbacks, and Bitcoin. Adam Kokesh, putting it on. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we bring you the Adam versus the man audio resolved after two minutes. Ultimate throwdown. Now, for the spirit of tonight's debate, which is truly a debate, we are going to be allowing various platforms and proposals to be considered tonight. It is done in the spirit of cooperation. And I hope I'm not speaking out of turn on behalf of anybody here to say, that we all recognize the scam that is the Federal Reserve System. We all recognize what the money masters are trying to do to the American people and the people of the world through the fiat currency scams. And we are here in support of each other as we explore these various alternatives to using Federal Reserve notes. Now, just to be absolutely clear, there is a moral imperative to not use United Walton, States Hours, dollars. Bill Still Greenbacks, holding Charlie Schramm Bitcoin. Today, you are empowering the Federal Reserve System. You are empowering the government to be able to create money that is considered of value in the market in a way that allows them to manipulate economic resources throughout the world. So, joining us from Summit County, Colorado, Wayne Walton, on the left monitor here, is going to be representing Mountain Hours and the idea of local community-based currencies for all the various ways that they can come about. And he is a, a personal monetary reform activist, someone who helped create the system of Mountain Hours, a local organic currency that is stabilized now in Summit County, Colorado. There's plenty... And his group of the guys who gave my video the Argentine solution, the Silver Bullet Award, and $500. Give information on this at mountainhours.com, mtnhours.com. And Wayne is also a self described, I guess, is, is this the correct pronunciation, Wayne? Jubilist? Yes. Jubilist, who believes that real revolution is monetary reform based on the Jubilee and eliminating. Usury. Bill Still in the middle monitor here is a former newspaper editor and publisher, best selling author, and award winning documentary writer and director. He's written for USA Today, the Saturday Evening Post, the LA Times, Omni Magazine, and produced the first syndicated radio shorts program, Health News. He's written 20 books, including his latest, No More National Debt. He's done three feature length documentaries, including The Money Masters, one of the most watched films in internet history, and The Secret of Oz. Winner of the best messing up. Winner of the best documentary of 2010 at the Beloit International Film Festival. Mr. Still, did I miss anything in your long resume of accomplishments there? Oh, we've got a little bit of a slowdown on the Skype from Bill. It looks like it's a connection on on his end, but we'll work on that. Charlie Schrem joins us as you can see on the right monitor here is the co-founder of BitInstant LLC and its current CEO. He's known known on the Bitcoin forums as Yankee. I don't know if that's going to do you any favors here tonight, Mr. Shrub. He has over five years' experience working with startups and business development in the e-commerce industry, along with Gareth. He founded the need for more secure, fast, and convenient way of transferring funds between and within exchanges. Living in New York City, he consults with dozens of businesses on how to manage their development, especially in the realm of adopting this new currency. Now, the spirit of this debate... Okay, he's basically talking about the transfer medium. Okay, the transfer mechanism.
not necessarily the medium that's being transferred. Seems to be one of, of cooperation and seeking an alternative to the United States dollar. But there's one thing that's missing here tonight. So on behalf of agorismetals.com, I'll be representing hard money. That's right, gold, silver, copper, physical <laughs> coins that you can own and hold in your hands. The yellow and silver rock boys. And it's important to note that tonight's debate is brought to you by agorismetals.com. Wow. And you can see if you'll be convinced to never buy gold and silver from us ever again. If And buy your neighbor's hours instead. These gentlemen do their job. But before we get into the actual distinct differences in these currencies, I'd like to give each of you a chance to tell us about how you got into this and why it's so important to be involved in the alternative currency movement. Wayne will give you the chance to go first here, if you could, in just a couple of minutes. Give us that introduction, please. Okay. Now, remember, these are all good guys working on the solution. But because they don't use <clears throat> the optimal model analogy of poker chips, which most people understand readily, they have difficulty dealing with certain concepts that I will deal with more easily. Also, unfortunately, none of them, I'm sure I would bet, understand inflation shift B. So I don't know if any will be able to say that the solution to the inflation that we are suffering is to print more money. And that sounds so zany to people who've been programmed to believe that inflation can only be too much money already and printing more would cause more inflation. They just can't get the idea that maybe it ain't more money, maybe it's too much foreclosure behind your back instead of too much money in front of your face that you actually don't see. In the old days, Germany, wheelbarrows of money, empty shelves. Now we've got full shelves, empty wallets. Not the same inflation. Basically, uh, came to find that the United States went bankrupt in 1933. The gold that was turned in was turned into the Federal Reserve. And then from there, that opened up uh, a whole process where for a while I was a gold bug. And uh, after watching Mr. Still's documentaries, I became a greenbacker. And because I wanted uh, to take action and implement something, I, I, I came upon Paul Glover's uh, and that numbers, works best. And this is a way you can actually affect monetary reform without waiting for a vote. Yeah. So uh, basically, I have my soul to monetary reform because it's essential that we remove the the money power from power so that humanity can evolve. And we're trying to get Charlie or uh, Bill Still back on here. Is there Charlie? Do we know what's going on with that? Charlie, working on, on the boards, not Charlie Shrem. All right, Mr. Shrem, if you would please give us that introduction to yourself in terms of how you got involved with these issues and why you think it's important to be involved in the alternative currency movement. Well, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Hello, hello. A lot of uh, Bitcoiners fell into the Bitcoin rabbit hole last year when there was, uh, about two years ago actually, when there was a a big press speculation on a few different things that you can do with Bitcoin. And I think it kind of woke up a lot of people who have been saying that this this monetary system that we have in the world now is just old, it's outdated, um, it's not technologically advanced, it's, it's in the 50s and 60s. Uh, I'm sorry, it, it, it's all electronic now. What is it that transferring on the internet transactions by Bitcoin is any different from transferring transactions through your bank. Um, and there needs to be, with uh, the legacy payment system and way to move money around the world, uh, there needs to be... Again, <clears throat> I have no difficulty moving money around the world. Uh, an intrinsic or real currency that's backing a payment system like this. So we fell down that rabbit hole and got really involved. The problem was at the time the price was exchanging was the price of the exchange of bitcoins was going up really quickly. And we so I don't really have much idea what he's talking about here. All we know is that the value of his token changes. 
couldn't get money in uh, fast enough as there is the largest exchange is based in Japan. So what we did was started a company where you can go and buy Bitcoin at any uh, local 7-Eleven, Walmart, CVS, and a bunch of other locations that we have. Okay, so you can buy Bitcoins. Is that like a Toronto dollar system or a Berkshire's cash-based let's not let's I shouldn't call them let's cash-based uh, community currency? You buy in for cash and you get electronic funds. What's the difference between that and going to a bank? You buy in for cash and you get electronic funds. So Charlie, do we? What's the status with Mr. Still? Uh, just a moment. All right, Mr. Still, if you would please. Go ahead and tell us, uh, just by, by way of a couple minutes of background, how you first got involved with these issues of monetary policy and why you think it's so important to be involved with the alternative currency movement. Uh, well, I got involved uh, when uh, I was in Spain in Northern Virginia in 1980, and I called me up and said, boy, there's no gold left in Fort Knox. And uh, I didn't understand the story, but I wrote it up as best as I could. and then tried to piece together what was going on later on. And the reason this is important is because it is the root cause of all of our, not only our economic problems today, but most of the world's social problems as well. And uh, once we solve this, and only when we solve this, uh, we'll be able to solve most of the world's hunger, poverty, misery, and disease. And I think that's probably enough for one lifetime. All right, now that we've got all three of you on, gentlemen, we'll give you the chance I spent my lifetime to make the case for what you're advocating. Take notes because there will be a rebuttal. Wayne, if you would please, what is Mountain Hours and why have you chosen this particular mechanism of supporting alternative currencies? So anyway, what had happened during Argentina's peso collapse is people had no money so they resorted to using uh, barter script. And uh, people don't have gold and silver during a collapse. People don't have anything. They're destitute. The, what actually happens during the collapse is the doors close. They don't have too much money. The, they have no money. So now they're able to barter and trade. And <clears throat> I think generally uh, we would all agree that barter would be the original form of trade. The barter is unwieldy because you need a partner uh, for timing and quantity. So if we just, money was then issued as an IOU, a producer issued the IOU themselves. So the closer that we get to that form of money, which is abundant, it's actually a, a, a private contract is an IOU that's issued on paper. We shouldn't be afraid of paper money. We should be afraid who issues the paper. As long as the producers are issuing it, it's distributed meaning it's local and organic, it's issued by producers, the producers spend it first, it's voluntary, and Mountain Hours fulfills all of those roles, and because it's issued without a debt or interest, it's also loaned without interest. So this is the currency that follows sacred economics, meaning that uh, Jews, Christians, and Muslims for thousands of years all forbid usury. So you get that? Just like when the Russian system collapsed in the 90s, 25,000 corporations, producers, all started issuing their own ruble chips. Coca-Cola rubles, you know, Ford rubles, McDonald's rubles, and everybody took them, and they worked fine. That's what he's saying here. Mountain Hours is following sacred economics which was learned through trial and error over a very long period of time. That and he also said you could also borrow the credits interest-free. So, producers use their products as collateral, and borrowers use their promise to work as collateral. Two perfect models. They take markers and they take products, which is exactly what my cashiers do in the casino. They take cash and they take IOUs. They take product and they take markers. So both cashiers would work the same thing dealing with corporations and dealing with people. People don't end up being debt slaves. Uh, that's the natural consequence of any currency that's based upon interest. Yes. That is the true demon, is usury, interest, or REBA. All of those things mean the same thing. And because It's too bad he didn't take a second 
to go into the mortgage means death gamble, because when everybody gets 10 and everybody owes 11, somebody's got to get knocked out of the game. Because this currency is denominated, uh, it's based upon time. Time is the only commu uh, commodity that a poor man has the same amount as a rich man. Uh, poor men don't nice have one. oil wells, they don't have gold mines, they don't have bitcoins. Uh, none of those things do the, does the poor man have access to, but a poor man does have access to uh, mountain hours. Uh, we've actually had, uh, in the Fed activists, I'm, I'm actually at a We Are Change Colorado uh, uh, house, and um, they earned mountain hours just for setting up and organizing an end the Fed rally. And exactly. In a time bank, when you volunteer hours for a useful purpose, it doesn't have to be for one person taking care of one little old lady driving her someplace or taking care of her. It can be taking care of the whole community by doing something for the whole community and getting your time acknowledged. They earned currency because they could trade their time for the currency. That's how abundant money... To people who appreciate what they spent their time doing should be and because we organize it locally we can keep a handle on it so that there's no inflation and in addition to that we can trade these currencies internationally yeah. because they're all based upon the same denominated unit of an hour of time that and here I always get a chance to say I spent 39 nights out of 40 on a tour of Europe and I paid with an IOU for a night back in Canada worth five hours because that's the exchange rate Europe was using. Five hours a night to travel the world. As a fixed value, an hour will always be an hour, Everywhere. whereas gold and silver and bitcoins, they all fluctuate. Now notice that in Canada we pay 12 green dollars an hour, in the States 10 Ithaca hours an hour, in France 60 green francs an hour, in Britain Greek 6 green pounds an hour, in Germany 20 green marks an hour. But between countries we trade hours. Well, you want to have a currency that's based upon something that's fixed, that you measure like an inch. And we uh, live in a, a paradigm that we always have scarce money and just as uh, Bill still was alluding to, uh, we don't have to live in scarcity. We can, we should never run out of money because uh, the amount of productivity that we have... It's like running out of chips. <laughs> the amount of productivity we have, yeah. ...is unlimited. Well, Human productivity maximum. is unlimited. We would never say that we're going to run out of inches and we can't build a house. We, as long as we produce, we can always create more money to reflect that value. Ooh, nice so said. I believe Mountain Hours uh, encompasses all of those issues. Yeah. And um, because of that, it's abundant. So yeah. it allows for us to create an abundant society, yeah. not a scarcity society that we have right now. Mr. Still, please describe the oh, currency system well that done, you're asking. Yeah, well, I just want to, uh, to disagree uh, with uh, Wayne Walton uh, in the following points. None. I agree with them completely. I, I, I couldn't agree with him more. I mean, he, he's, he's right on. Uh, uh, his, his description of, uh, of uh, um, currency being capable of being in abundance instead of in scarcity is exactly right. His description of uh, uh, interest in Reba is exactly right. Uh, I, I just take no issue with anything he said. Well, if you would please explain the system that, that you, you would advocate for as a government-controlled uh, greenback type currency. Well, uh, I, I, I think, uh, yeah, I believe in, in debt-free government-issued money, but I, I also believe in uh, complementary currencies as well. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's a safety net. Uh, uh, and, and basically, it, it uh, goes along with um, my basic premise that power always needs to be deconsolidated to the maximum extent practical. How does your... And of course, Wayne agrees with what he just said, because Wayne's group gave the Argentine solution the silver bullet winner. And what's the Argentine solution? It's Bill Stills's government printing its own chips answer, as well as people printing their own chips answer. And of course, the Argentine solution was paying all their employees 
In 2001, Argentina was broke. By 2006, all her foreign debt was paid off. How'd they do that? Unions said then and in 1986 when they were busted too, you're not going to lay anybody off. We'll take small denomination bonds in our pay if we can pay for hydro taxes, medical and licenses, and all our government services with these bonds because then everybody will take them. And they took them in their pay, no layoffs, more employment, all foreign debt paid off in five years. Now, everybody else can do the Argentine solution too, and Bill Stills' Lincoln Greenbacks is the Argentine solution as well. What's a U.S., what's an Argentine bond or a Lincoln Greenback? It's a government piece of paper you can pay your taxes with. They're the same thing. So, both government using their own interest-free chips, a la Mr. Still, and people using their own interest-free chips, as a la Wayne Walton, are both viable, and I want them both. In one big unilex. It works the same way it worked uh, during the time of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, the, the government shouldn't... Uh, 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 the government should be able to uh, issue all the money that it needs uh, without debt. And uh, in your intro, you made uh, a mistake that you, know, you made the same time last time I was on. That's uh, uh, the, the government. I hate it when they say without debt. Because let's face it, even King Henry, who ran a perfect government finance system, he took a piece of wood, split it in two. One half was his tally worth a pound of gold, and the other half was the stub and he kept it in treasury. And just like Lincoln, just like the Argentine provinces, they paid out their tallies and their bonds and their greenbacks, but they had to keep track of how much they spent because that's how much they had to tax back. Well, that's a bit of a debt, isn't it? You know you gotta get it back, so you sort of owe it to your own cashier. He's saying, hey, I gave you 400 million chips, Mr. Lincoln, you gotta give them back at a certain point as the stuff depreciates. So, same idea. They all work the same. Government that does not create any money. Uh, that, that good that's point. What you're, the mistake you're making is that you think the Fed is part of the government. The Fed is not part of the government. Right. Uh, the, the, the bank. Fed, and even then, the Fed is only creating money uh, in. The banks create every dime in our system as an interest-bearing debt. The government does not create money other than coins, and that's a very small percentage. Thank you, sir. Charlie Schrem, now... And should create the money, interest rate. How does Bitcoin stack up against these proposals? It's on anyway. It's, we'll it's create it's our own. You mentioned Abraham Lincoln because I think during the Civil War is when, when the South was, was printing um, so much money just to pay back uh, the debt that was caused by, by the Civil War. But um, I, I really like Mountain Hours. Um, I was actually in Summit County recently, and I think that it's a, it's a really cool idea. Um, and the way it works is... And all he's got to do is back up his Bitcoins with hours, so his great transfer mechanism is transferring a pretty good medium of exchange globally. It's really smart. Um, I have a few things that I'm concerned about, is I just don't like uh, the idea of a currency issued by debt. Um, I think the second thing is that... Well, sorry, but let's is a currency that's issued by interest-free debt. I give you an hour of labor, I'm taking your IOU. I'm taking your interest-free debt. So, what do you want to call it? That's what acknowledgments are. They're IOUs. IOUs are debts. There's nothing wrong with an honorable debt. It's only the dishonorable growth of debt we should object to. It's kind of hard to, to debate the fact that mountain hours are something that could be international um, and global, especially in the world that we're living in. <laughs> it already is. I've been transferring my emailed hours for 15 years almost, since 99. Um, especially in the technological world that we're living in. At the end of the day, people want to pay with their smartphones or the simplest way possible and be able to send money uh, around the world. It's simple, it's easy and it's cheap. And it can be done with hours too. And as fast as possible because it shouldn't take 9% with Western Union in three days to send money to Canada or Mexico <laughs> or right across the border. Um, with Bitcoin, my argument is that Bitcoin has two things, two sides to it. One um, is that people look at it as a currency 
Um, that's not the first thing you should look at it as, because there, there's something that gives Bitcoin value, and that's the uppercase B. The fact that it's a, that a global payment system within itself. The fact that it's mathematically impossible for anyone to ever freeze your funds. Mathematically impossible for anyone to tell you that you can't pay someone else. It's mathematically impossible for someone to limit the amount of money that you're... Can somebody mathematically tell me I can't send someone an IOU for five hours the next time I stay somewhere? Mathematically impossible for someone to limit the amount of money that you're sending. It's also mathematically impossible to limit how many emails I can send out, right? Um, and when you can do it, I you can send a quarter million dollars to uh, a business partner in Japan. And I can send 20,000 hours. <laughs> and I have that in my account. And um, on a U.S. banking holiday, continue doing my work without having to, to deal with banking holidays and closing of the wire trend. Yeah, me too, with my email account. Always there. Your system in it. It costs, I know a guy who, in, he has a company in, in Japan and he's having to pay um, wire fees and currency conversion. All right, he's solving the problem of banks not being open on Sundays. <laughs> I can do. He used to pay all of his factories in China um, and all over the world. So there are a few points um, from that. And like you said, I think that one of the first things you mentioned was that a poor man has time and that the currency is based on time. And I really like that idea too. But you also said that the poor man doesn't have Bitcoin, the poor man doesn't have this, and the poor man doesn't have that. But at the same time, there are other people who have Bitcoin, like me, and I'll say, you want to work, this is the price, and this is, you know, you think you're valued at this, this amount, um, and you can come work, and I'll give you Bitcoin, and that's... Okay, sure, you've created your chips, and you're saying, hey, anybody want to take them, come and work for me. So what? I can do that with ours, too, except i got to earn mine. So you it yours. So now instead of having to deal with someone who wants to build me a website and giving them mountain hours down the block, yeah. I can expand my search and have someone build me a website anywhere in the world and pay them through Bitcoin. And very soon, Wayne will be able to transfer hours around the world like I do, because I can pay people to do my website already around the world, and I'll prove it right now. In another screen, I've loaded my facebook.com slash john.termel slash info page where I list my Unilets account, my own person-to-person -person account. So take a quick look now. Here it is! All right, so we'll scroll up a little bit. Okay, my About You page, I've made it bigger. So anyway, there's my Time Bank account. So I offer gaming house poker chips from the biggest casino ever rated. Translation from French to English, accordion concerts, accommodations in Canada, in all those cities. So, wanted. I want accommodations when I travel, history books, translation from English to other languages, auto repair. Hours earned I'm proud of. Well, engineering world, that's 33 years. Well, actually it's going on 34 now, so that's like 68,000 hours if you average it out for... Uh, then I gave Michael Linton 20,000 bucks in 1984 to finance the development of the first Let's Time Bank Green Dollar software. And that was worth so many hours at that time, 4,000. That's how I'm counting it now. Uh, I gave the Toronto Let's System 3,000 bucks for a laser printer. You know, that's 600 hours. I protested at the Bank of Canada. I count those hours as volunteer hours people will appreciate and take. You know, I play accordion at old folks' homes, and I'm sure the kids or the grandparents will, will take my hours. You know, I, uh, when I go protest somewhere, abolish marijuana, prohibition, protest, those hours I put in. When I went and picketed the G20, I put those hours in. You know, when I went and fight in the courts for marijuana, put those hours in. Um, Occupy Toronto, I put every one of my ten marches in a row in every week. Um, and... Then underneath, hours spent, and it starts back in 1999 where I got the idea from um, France. I had been visiting there, and Daniel de la Rasse was telling me about their jeu system. They said, you know, we got tired of the original Let's software. We had to call up and say, hey, please transfer 50 green dollars from my account to his 300 green francs, whatever, from my account to his account. And uh, we decided we're going to get rid of the central computer. We're going to keep passbooks. And I'm going to put all my transactions in there. And then when we do one, you're going to sign my book and I'll sign yours. Fair enough. 
fine. I looked at it and I said, wow, great idea. Decentralizes completely into everybody issuing their own chips. But you can still have the benefit of centralization, which let you look at the, all the accounts and see if the guy's a bum, by putting that same page on the internet. So I went, came home to Canada and immediately wrote up a page with all the IOUs for all the nights in Europe I spent and posted them and said, this is my Let's Online account and these are the hours I owe. And anybody wants to put these people up when they go around, you can transfer my IOUs, please. So, and that's basically it. There were, these are the nights in Europe and Germany and 11 countries out of 12, I didn't, so 10 out of 11, 9 out of 10. Anyway, there they are. And then, of course, when I stay anywhere, if I can't pay in cash, I send them an IOU for five hours because one of my friends will appreciate it and put them up to and take those hours. So anybody who helped me anywhere, I try and give them those hours. It's my thank you. Neat, eh? So that's how you can thank all your friends. And I have a file at johntermel.com slash uniset.htm, which explains how you can set up your own Unilets online person-to-person -person time bank account and all the advantages you can derive like I did. So there it is. Every time I do something I'm proud of, like any volunteer in the U.S. time bank system, the time dollar system do, right? There are many volunteers in time dollars in the States. Put in an hour volunteering, they give you an hour. Same idea, except mine's run by me online. Everybody can see, and I can trade globally, and I have. And you can too. So everything Bitcoin can do, I can do at Facebook. Except my medium of exchange is time. And you know what that's always worth. And his medium of exchange, well, we'll go into when he tries to explain it. Um, I want to address Global the potential of, of usury, and you, Charlie, were you saying that Mountain Hours was a, a debt-backed currency? First of all, let me explain the difference between usury and interest. I give you a hundred head of cattle, and you got a bull. You can pay me back 110 next year. That might be called reasonable interest. And that's why God denounced to Ezekiel that the wicked is he who exacts usury or excessive interest. So taking too many cows, that's a problem. But what's usury? Well, that's when you charge interest on something that doesn't have babies. That creates the death gamble, where somebody gets knocked into foreclosure and slavery, the source of slavery throughout history by debt slavery. Usury. No, I said I don't like the idea of a, a debt-backed currency. So, okay. All right. So because debt with usury causes problems, he doesn't like debt. And yet, it's a debt for an hour. We know it. That's our standard. He doesn't like that. Okay, now, specifically, though, Wayne is saying that we should be eliminating usury, that there should be no fee for borrowing of money. Wayne, is that exactly what you're asserting? Service charge banking. That there should be no fee for the issuance of the money or for the lending of the money. Yeah. So bankers someone, time okay. Like if I if I have ten dollars and I and I want to loan someone ten dollars and say hey but you know if you're gonna have this for for a year uh, I want some return on you know my my time preference. The why would the sucker borrow your ten dollars when he can go to the bank put up a marker and get his own chips? Basic idea that. I'm expressing money is a commodity. I don't I don't need my money now. Everybody's forgetting that now, with an interest free source now, of credit, nobody needs to borrow anybody else's money. Interest. Shouldn't I have the right to charge someone interest? Go ahead and money? try. <laughs> well, it, it, there's two issues there. Number one, uh, this is a I believe in voluntarism, so um, ultimately people can do what they want, but the issue is that we we have to change our meaning of what money is. Money is our value. It's not someone else's value that we have to pay them to use their value. We we have value ourselves, so we can issue an IOU ourselves. That's what money is. So we have to get out of this uh, paradigm that we believe money is a commodity when in fact money is just a uh, an IOU. It's a private contract. So as long as we're all, uh, answer, ultimately, right? in order for me to pay that loan back, yeah. I would have to produce value. Yeah. So if I was going to produce value anyway, yeah. then I could create the money myself. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand how you're saying that self-issuing money 
and IOUs are not debt. You're, you're issuing... They are debt. They're interest-free debt, though. They're the social credit portion of the debt, not the anti-social cancerous growth debt portion. Your own money, you're, give, you're basically taking on your own debt because you have... <laughs> but you notice that it allows him to argue with the guys who keep criticizing money for being debt money, right? He's arguing with Bill Still here who said he doesn't like debt money. Government issues it without debt. Well, say they issue it with debt, interest-free debt, and now this guy can't argue with you no more, right? <laughs> Being paid back. And what's to say that I can't issue the most amount of money that I want? I'm in this city. I issue IOUs to everyone. I, I give everyone all my IOUs. And all right, so he goes and logs on his Facebook account. He's, he went there, and he went there, and he went there, and he went there, and he went there, okay? Everybody can see him logging these spendings all over the place. Fine. Crippled kid in the hospital, too. And all of a sudden, people are trusting me. And then I pick up and go to the next city, and I change my name. And, and all of a sudden, I screwed everyone in the city before, and I start all and he does it again. And then he moves from the Ottawa Lets to the Toronto Lets to the Peterborough Lets to the Guelph Lets to the Hamilton Lets to the Calgary Lets and screws everybody for 500 hours. Doesn't want to pay it back. Just an absolute abuser. True. But when Unilets kicks in, and I've had people complain, oh, I still have hours I didn't get to spend in my old Lets before it collapsed. Well, I said, it may stop working, but the point is your credits are still good. And when Unilets comes around, we're going to all roll them into Unilets. And if you say, hey, I have a hundred buck hours owed in, from the Ottawa Lets, and we look at those books and we see, hey, it's Freddie the Freeloader, and over here you were Freddie, Freddie the Front Man, and over here you were whatever. Unilets, you're going to have to pick up those negatives, Buster. Where are you going to go, Mars? So when Unilets kicks in, the bums, the abusers, can't get away. And even then, so what? So what? The whole group is going to take those bum chips and in the final analysis, the whole group is going to absorb that loss when the whole group can all chip in to write off Lenny the Freeloader's bum debt. Beside the little orphan who just died at two years old because the operation didn't save him and we're all chipping in to cover what he couldn't pay too. So, in the world of the future, it's when you die that we count up how much you won or lost and then chip in or collect. Because, let's face it, a rich man dies, it'll be a big potlatch to the whole world. Elvis died, he's given us all an eight-hour bill back to our accounts because he couldn't spend it all. Well, anyway, that's sort of how it works. But the negatives, too. So, the only negatives will be the sick and the weak, the unlucky, and the lazy. And who's going to want to be lumped in with the lazy when there's all sorts of good-paying jobs being useful? Right? But let's presume there are the abusers who don't mind being looked down as abusers and by everybody they eventually knew, right? Take some really aberrant, sick screw-up as your example, and let's see how our system copes. Yeah, we bite it if the guy ends up never giving it back. Lazy Lenny died with the retards. <laughs> Over again. In the negative. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm describing what money is. Money is, you know, we can, you know, ultimately money is an IOU. That's how it was issued. Within Mount Hour's <laughs> system, we issue it at... Right, right. Isn't money an IOU? And this kid's saying, I want money now based on IOU because Bitcoin ain't based on debt. It's based on nothing. <laughs> Within Mount Hour system, we issue it as a credit because the business creates the value first. Um, the value in Mount Hours, uh, so in, in that paradigm as described with the IOU, the money is issued first as an IOU, then the value is produced. With Mount Hours, the issuer, uh, the, the value is created first, then the currency is created. So that's the difference with Mountain Hours, is it's created as a credit. And Let's is created as a negative, a marker, an IOU for an hour. He's saying that they create the product and then they issue their chips, bring product to the cashier. And I'm saying they can also go with markers to the cashier. It doesn't have to be backed up by product. 
So he's not answering the kid's question because he's not dealing with the fact there's nothing wrong with debt. He kept saying it wasn't, but he could have hit him better. Charlie? See? No, no. I'm, I'm playing out realistic scenarios in my head of how this is realistic. Be used in, a, in, a, in an economy, even a local economy. You um, can't figure out how time have, is traded. Unfortunately, um, people who commit fraud and people who commit um, and I'm, uh, illegal acts, and I'm all for <sighs> self-regulation, of course, but at the same time, I just think that issuing IOUs, those IOUs are then passed on to someone else. So if I, if I have someone and I um, say, you know, please clean my garden or, or plant flowers and I'll issue you an IRU for, for two or three mountain hours or IRU hours, let's just, let's just call them. And then a check. someone else can take those IRUs. Can someone else take those and, and reuse them? Yes. Can our IRUs transfer? Yes. That's what money was originally. Yes. The IRU could, you know, let, let's say for of instance, uh, that's what makes it money. Uh, you know, I was a wheat farmer and uh, you uh, produce bread. Well, you can produce bread all year long, but I can only produce wheat for uh, the summer months. So, I, I, however, I need to feed my children. So, I would issue you, I, I want to execute a barter with you, let's say, a loaf of bread in exchange for a bushel of wheat. So, I would issue an IOU to you that I'll deliver a bushel of wheat upon the harvest. That way, I would trade my producer. I'm a producer. I issued an IOU to you. Uh, I get the your loaf of bread, I feed my kids, you have the IOU that you could turn around. But now he's explaining it as a debt, right? It should have been the guy who's got the grain paying it out first. But now he's working the other way around, the debt. And the farmer is saying, here is my IOU, my debt to the, to the baker. And when my crop comes in, you can have my grain back, right? Found it. You could use that. Uh, uh, to go, you know, buy a, some, a hat or something from another producer. Yeah. So ultimately that IOU would come back to me at some point and it would be redeemed. So it comes down to the issuer must be honest. It's a private contract and it's essential in any society to be... And if the society is global, where can the dishonest guy run away? Once there's a Unilets here and everybody's got a time bank account, where are the thieves going to hide their illegal profits when everybody can see their accounts? Hey, Freddie, how'd you come into $2 billion last weekend? <laughs> I went to Vegas. Yeah. That you have to have people honor their contract. It's the most yeah, basic yeah. tenet of a responsible society. I know, but the kid presumed that, let's say, here's a guy who don't obey with the basic tenets, a criminal. Let's deal with the criminals. As if everyone's going to be a cr criminal if one can be. Oh, well. So, yeah. the more local and organic this is, the more you're able to keep a, uh, a head on that. So, but it can be global too. I'll take mountain hours in Canada. So, uh, you know, I want I want to express that we don't do this with mountain hours. It's not issued as an IOU. It's issued as a credit after the value has been produced in advance. Charlie, could be. So you um, you bake my bread for a whole for a whole season, and then you um, decide to uh, give me all that bread and everything, um, and then I. Once it's my turn to give you all the wheat that you need for you and your family, I say, sorry, uh, I just don't want to do it. All right. Well, you know something? I think I'd like to take this kid out back behind the barn, okay? He wants to do that to me and my group. I think this kid deserves the strapping of his life. I get up and leave. What happens then? Strap your head off, you well, ass yeah, off, kid. Not. This is, we're not describing mountain hours right now, but if that were to occur, in any society, you're always going to have uh, miscreants or absconders, let's call like them. Like you. <laughs> uh, ultimately, those people would be uh, removed, you know, they would be separated from society that you would no longer accept their IOUs. Just like, That's right. You know, you're always going to have people in any society that break the rules. Now remember, if everybody had a Facebook Unilets account like I did, who is going to take this kid's IOU? <laughs>
So you can't uh, just assume that that's what everybody's going to do. Uh, you or, can't have a system based upon that. I know. Um, when money is made to what be a waste abundant, of time. you have an abundant society and people are doing what they like yeah. and they love for a living. Um, you know, they produce and they fulfill their IOUs. Yeah. As people are normally good. Yeah. And that's their natural nature is to to honor their contracts. Yes. We live in a scarce society now, so it's hard to uh, kind of believe people that will, will fulfill these contracts. No, it's not. But ultimately, with mountain hours, we issue the currency in advance so that, let's say, for instance, somebody did leave our barter network. Um, the currency that was issued upon their value still circulates even if they leave the network. Sure. So it doesn't matter if uh, any particular individual leaves or, uh, you know, there, there's sometimes you can't fulfill your IOUs uh, based upon weather or health or a variety of other reasons, uh, not just because, um, you know, they're, they're of a poor moral value, let's call it. So. Uh, Mountain Hours uh, alleviates those issues because the currency circulates irrespective of any particular producer leaves the network. Mr. Still, welcome back. If, if you would, please, we're getting into some of the more specific comparisons. I mean, it's true. How are you going to be able to tell that the chips in your hand were chips backed up by the marker or the IOU of the guy who died versus the IOU of the guy who's still alive? How are you going to tell, right? <laughs> it's something to be fixed in the cage. The Insurance program, potlatch program. Systems. But I think there's a, when, when you're advocating for a, a government backed, a government issued debt free currency, and at the same debt time free. saying that there should be these competing currencies, the, the, the burden would be on you then to justify why do we also need the government involved at that point? Why shouldn't the government use its own chips interest-free too if everybody else can? You want them to be stuck going to keep going to banks, get the loan shark money, and taxing us to pay them interest? That's why I want government to get their own interest-free account so they stop taxing us to pay interest. He wa doesn't want government to have an account. Why? So they can keep charging us interest? Uh. Issuing money it, it, the most uh, important responsibility of a sovereign nation. Uh, it, that's always been the way it is. And, uh, uh, I think everything else just has to fall in the category of a complementary currency. Um, you know, I think there are, there are also plenty of ways to do this. And any one of them Two. is going to be far superior uh, the debt-based money system that we have today. So, uh, let's is a debt-based money system, and it's superior to the debt-based money system of today. So, what's the difference between the superior debt-based money system and the inferior debt-based money system? No interest. Uh, I'm not. I'm really not the expert in comparative economics. I'm more the, the historian of this crowd. Me and, too. Uh, 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 debating the minutia of which, which one of these other systems is better than the other is uh, beyond my expertise. Not mine. Well, in, in the case of the currency that you're advocating, you know, historically it, it's been a challenge uh, for competing currencies to even have the opportunity to exist when the government is issuing a fiat currency, right? There, there's always been an interest in whoever controls that fiat currency and I suppose in the system you're suggesting this would be fundamentally different, but that there would be an interest in keeping competing currencies from existing because it, it threatens that monopoly. If you have competing currencies, wouldn't the government fiat currency quickly lose out to things like Bitcoin or Mountain Hours? Why would a banking system that can already transfer government fiat currency around have any more difficulty transferring interest-free government fiat currency around? You know what? I, I have tra Back to the failure to use the internet. Gee, if government would only use the internet, maybe the problems would go away. <laughs> Trouble talking to you when 
when you don't understand the basic assumption of how um, money is created in the United States. The government does not issue fiat currency. That's right. Banks create they all do. money with the That's exception right. of coin. Well, no, I'm talking about the system that, you, that you're suggesting, a government-issued fiat currency, or that, that would not be debt-based. Uh-huh. So what would prevent competing currencies from simply immediately uh, causing the people to abandon a government-issued fiat currency in, in place of these alternatives? Okay, so you've got these alternative currencies like LATs or whatever, who are credits that are being issued in exchange for work, and you have these government credits that are being issued in exchange for work, and we're worried about the flight of people's confidence from the government credits issued for work compared to the other credits issued for work. Right? We're worried about something we shouldn't be worried about. Well, if that was the case, that would be fine. But yeah, it's not. Uh, <laughs> uh, all of these competing uh, currencies, typically, I, I can't imagine... As a matter of fact, I would have suggested that the very opposite be so. That when the big government interest-free chips start getting used and millions of people are getting them in their paychecks, that less and less people are going to be needing to use much of their own personal credit creation if they're earning government chips, right? Imagine a, 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 an example where it would not, would have a higher cost of use than uh, a, 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 the ubiquitousness of a debt-free government-issued money. If that was not the case, and the competing currency uh, could, could circulate uh, with less cost of use and uh, uh, more freely, then, then fine. that would be fine with me. And the point is it's not true. Both can do it just as effectively with one computer, right? So, government issuance or people issuance, it's all the same thing. And he's right, doesn't matter. If it's cheaper, fine, but it won't be. So, if they're both equally as cheap, use them both. But... Uh, Mr. Walton, mountain hours. Obviously, there are some disadvantages to having a physical paper currency compared to what we see as an obvious advantage of bitcoins being digitized and international and, and seemingly... Well, wait a minute now. Banks use paper currency and credits to transfer around. I use paper hours and email hours to transfer around. So why can't Wayne be transferring his hours around by email too? So why presume that Wayne is committed to only paper when both media are available to us? Paper and computers. Gosh. Bitcoin ain't winning this just because they're on the computers. We can do it too. A better poise for global adoption. What can mountain hours do that bitcoins can't? The same thing as Bitcoin, but with a real good medium. <laughs> uh, well, well, with respect to the, the, the virtual aspect, uh, it is possible, and, and it's already being done with some... Uh, local currencies such yes, as the sir. Bristol Pound. The Bristol Pound is a local uh, paper-based currency. Oh, and John Turmel's ours. Physical and virtual. And I might add, um, they can have text payments, and the mayor of Bristol is actually taking his pay in the form of the local currency. So that's the, the next step for them. I visited Bristol, 99 the let's. Taxes in the form of the local currency. Mm. So that is... Uh, that's very heartening. One of the primary things that will create abundance and, and a complete uh, renaissance for humanity is once we start loaning our money, our money, H-O-U-R, ah. uh, without interest, <laughs> yeah. that removes 20 years from a 30-year mortgage. Yeah. And it, it uh, uh, creates a paradigm where, uh, you know, people are, are, you know, if you were to get a house, say, at uh, 25 years old, you have your house owned free and clear by age 35. Uh, Isn't that so incredible? You create an entirely different paradigm mm -hmm. where there is no national debt, there is no public debt, there's no private debt. Mm -hmm. uh, humanity, it, at that point, people will be able to work within the vocation of their passion instead of doing these 
soul-stealing jobs such as... Okay, there will be a little bit of private debt from the sickly kids who need a lot of operations. Orphans, maybe. Whatever. Working at the TSA or any other myriad of ugly, uh, disgusting jobs that people just don't want to do. Um, there's approximately 40% of everything that we pay for is based upon usury at some level of the economic system where people are paying interest at yeah. various levels of the production. And in charge of us. So uh, usury free is the way that we create abundance for humanity. And uh, because bitcoins are based upon a commodity, uh, they can't be issued and loaned without interest. So I would say that's, uh, and it's scarce. So because by virtue of it being scarce in the first place, First of all, they haven't explained what Bitcoins are based on yet, have they? We heard that, oh, people pay cash for them. Well, that doesn't mean that's what they're based on. He did point out he wants to have people work for them. Same idea. I heard you have to devote a certain amount of time with your computer, wasting time playing a mining for gold game of some kind, and when you've wasted enough time doing nothing useful, you get a credit on Bitcoin. Now, why not go out there, spend an hour yourself doing something useful to back up your Bitcoin, instead of having your computer waste an hour doing nothing useful before you can issue your Bitcoin. It's not really fundamentally tackling the problem that we have right now. Right now, Federal Reserve notes are scarce already. That's the reason why people are getting foreclosed on, that defaults are built into the system because Federal Reserve notes are already scarce. For us to adopt a currency system such as gold, silver, or bits that are even more scarce uh, plays into the hand of the people who want to engineer defaults and foreclosures, bankruptcies, and a loss of sovereignty. Uh, that's what the private bankers want, uh, is for us to default and to be debt, uh, debt slaves. That's what we are right now. So um, I believe uh, in, in my soul, deeply investigated this, is that, uh, uh, you know, 1,500 2,000 years of usury-free economics is what's necessary for humanity to have massive, massive abundance. Thank you. You should have said usury-free for two weeks. <laughs> um, yes, Liberty Panacea has a question for Bill Still, which is, would there still be legal tender laws in your preferred form of currency? You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that. Um, yeah. uh, Certainly, in order in order for uh, a, a national money to be national, it has. Do you have to pass a law that says everybody's got to take everybody else's poker chips before? Once we acknowledge that we'll take everybody else's poker chips, why shouldn't you? You don't like this person in particular because he touched them. What? to be good for the payment of taxes. Now, whether yeah. that involves legal tender laws uh, by necessity or not, I'm not sure. That's right. You can pay your tax with it. You want this piece of paper or not? Well, I'm, do I have to? <laughs> can I skip the deal, send you out of my store, because I don't want to take it as legal tender and you can't force me? <laughs> Okay, and then also, if we switch to a public debt-free fiat currency, what is going to stop government from enacting a huge amount of programs and enacting extremely high taxes? Nothing. If you want to have an extremely large number of programs taking care of you and your environment, if King Henry's going to spend a lot of tallies and you earn big tallies cleaning the environment, yeah, taxes are going to go up to reflect the increase in expenditure on programs to take care of you, lady. Well, uh, in, in, in a rightly uh, compelling... I know. 
she's a worker and she's thinking in terms of programs for poor people who aren't working and she thinks it's going to cost her more. Typical working debt slave. Uh, debt free government issued money system, uh, you don't you don't look at, at taxes as uh, as for revenue production. That's right. The only reason uh, uh, taxes would be necessary would to actually to take money out of the system should uh, inflation arise. Well, it can't. As, Wayne as said, stuff uh, depreciates. Not in the hyperinflationary uh, scenario That's here, right. we're in a scarcity scenario, and so um, the, the only inflation that there is is uh, that which is is created by uh, the the Fed and their QE uh, artificially uh, pumping money into just one section. The, the Actually, no. Pumping money, shift A, is an inflation. Inflation isn't pumping money into circulation. Remember, the debt is always more than the money, right? No matter how much new money they pump into circulation, the debt is that plus. So. It's not pumping money into circulation that's the problem. It's not shift A. We need to pump more money into circulation. Printing money fights inflation. Shift B. Top 1%, the, the financial section, and they them being allowed to uh, play in this giant worldwide casino called the derivatives market. <sighs> it's splashing so in the pool. People say that bitcoins have been hacked. What is your response? Bitcoin is they're worth the nothing when they're being uh, hacked. <laughs> protocol. It's never been hacked. Bitcoin right. exchanges who operate their own security have had their wallets hacked just because their passwords may have not been strong enough. It's like saying someone hacked into your bank account and sends all your money away through wire transfer. All right. Now, how are you going to hack into my Unilets Time Bank page? Are you going to go erase the concert I did at Amber Lee two weeks ago? <laughs> Don't say that. The dollar was hacked. Especially if the Amber Lee page has a negative two hours. Thank you, John Turmel, for your concert. Matching my plus two hours at my page. How are you going to hack that? Jeez. But Bitcoin's hackable wallets. Another problem. <laughs> Uh, people who say that just don't understand exactly what happened uh, in the situations. Bitcoin is just like email. It's a it's a way. It's Gee, a standard, just like my um, hours. Protocol. But if you will, I just want to comment on a on a few things um, about mountain hours. Okay, so my email transfer mechanism can't be gamed with, and his can. But I heard before. I, I'm trying to. I'm having a little difficulty getting over what was said about that. If you take a mortgage over 20 years, it may go from, from a 40-year mortgage to a 20-year mortgage if we're not charging interest. Yeah. But my question is, who is issuing that mortgage if they're not getting interest payments? We the guys who are printing the new stuff. He thinks it's a piggy bank, remember. He doesn't understand it's a casino bank with new chips. So he thinks that the guys providing the money for the mortgage deserve their interest. They worked hard for it, even if it was just going for 10 seconds on a computer screen. Uh -huh. See, kid knows nothing, you know, spoiling the story. Yeah, this whole concept of opportunity costs that we haven't even touched on. <laughs> dollars, like you said, are worth uh, valuable and their, their time is very important. $500 to me now may be um, worth a lot more to someone else because they need to pay off some debt or they need to pay off a mortgage. But if they have their own account? <laughs> like that. The, the currency cooperative issues, the loans, uh, if the could New York had a, yeah. a, a loan that they actually issued to the bank, that is the fundamental paradigm shift for us to understand is the people of the currency cooperative loaned $30,000 worth of hours to the bank. The people are the value. The private bankers do not produce the value. The people produce the value. They Wait a minute. But that was the first bank I ever heard of that accepted Ithaca hours in payment of service fees and things like that that didn't work with the bankers background books so they were supporters of Ithaca hours so it makes sense if they ran into trouble that Ithaca hours would support them back by giving them some local credits or employees can spend in town. 
until they come back and pay them for their fees. Loan $30,000 interest free. Nice. How do the people value to the bank or loans to the bank? What? You just issue the currency. They, they, the chips. The, you know, it's it's strange for some reason people think it's okay for a private bank to issue the currency. No, I don't believe it's okay for a private bank what a, people to issue their own currency. And with Bitcoin, nothing issues it. It just comes out of our program. <laughs> uh, that's the, my whole cooperative problem. itself. The, the currency cooperative did as a, a, a voluntary cooperative. So, Charlie, what's the problem with the community then issuing a currency? Because what's the, to stop the community? Saying we approve of the hours spent by these volunteers cleaning this river. And we're going to give them all these pieces of paper, and then we're going to up our taxes and let everybody around pay that tax for cleaning the river with those pieces of paper. And if you want to pay your tax, maybe you should take those pieces of paper from those workers who clean the river. But let's go back to the kid who can't stay with it. Community from issuing more currency and more currency. And getting more and more work done. <laughs> Unless it's a community next door that is... No, 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 no. When you got no more workers, you can't keep issuing hours, can you? Jeez. He's, the kid's stuck in the paradigm of the regular money system, you know? And his Bitcoin. Hey, my mind's just working full-time creating credits in my account, and I'm doing nothing for them. Allegedly, yeah. or, or trying to be on a similar system that they want to be able to exchange with. What if uh, a community wanted to build up 10 new houses, so yes. they issue more hours so they can build these houses but they're okay a community issues in the united states they build a million bucks worth of houses and they pay everybody with a hundred thousand hours and everybody knows if they want to live in those houses they better take those hours Inter trading these hours with the community next door and the community next door is, is being a lot more fiscally responsible but they're spending the value of one may be different to the value of the other ah. One is now worth 59 minutes, and the other one is now worth 61. <laughs> you have to have proper accounting for that. The only accounting is to take the hours out of circulation as fast as the houses depreciate. Certainly we can manage these things. Uh, yeah. We have to get out of this, this kind of mindset that what if we can't do this because this might happen. Yeah. We have to be problem solvers instead of problem finders. St. Paul said it best, do out of what you have, not out of what you have not. <laughs> Got no money. <laughs> These things have to all be remedied. Got min material tools, but got no money. Do out of what you have with min material tools, and not out of what you don't have. No money. Can't do anything. <laughs> Great line though, eh, St. Paul? With the problem just best practices <laughs> and auditing. All we have to do is make sure the auditing is in place by third-party auditors That's to make right. sure that everything's being issued with uh, best, best practices. That's right. Still skeptical, Charlie? Of course he is. A little bit, but I'm just because I probably don't understand enough about it. Exactly. I was skeptical of Bitcoin when I first heard about it. And you're not? I think that at the end of the day, the more alternative currencies, the better, because they'll all have different value and value to uh, interchange between each other um, will be different, and it'll... Here I am striving for one global value that everyone can understand easily. And he's happy with many different ones, he thinks. Bet I win. Opportunity for companies like mine to be the currency exchangers. So, more alternative currencies, the more business. I don't mind him being a my currency exchanger. Why hasn't he realized the potential market he has out there? Every human being on the planet who doesn't have a cash bank account is a market for his interest-free Bitcoin hours account, isn't it? And he doesn't see it. For me. Well, Mr. Still, then, as, as you suggest a system for a... a all they got to do is change their basis of their Bitcoin credits from time wasted by your computer doing nothing useful for anybody to time you put in doing something useful for someone else. Government issued currency that would create the framework that would work competition too. could happen. What kind of competition do you anticipate would then result if, if you had... Uh, the system that you're advocating. Forget the competition. They both work. Well, it's like, look it. 
In the old days, the Vegas casinos accepted each other's chips. Did that mean that some casinos issued more chips than they should have? No! Come on! It's limited by the collateral. It's a natural function. I don't really care what type of uh, competition uh, comes into the yeah. system. Uh, and I, I supported the Utah uh, Monetary Reform Act uh, two years ago. And but he didn't support Dennis Kucinich's Bill 2990. The biggest mistake of Bill Still's career. Because that would have ended the Fed and had greenbacks issued by Treasury, again, to pay for infrastructure. It's exactly what Bill still advocates. And Bill didn't support him because he said he didn't like the makeup of the governing body. He didn't like the makeup of the panel of the cashiers to run the chips. So he didn't support the bill that would have solved our problems right away. When Utah allowed gold and silver coin to be used uh, to be used uh, good for the payment of uh, all debts in the state, uh, I, I, I and some places are letting ours and let's be used. Those are the real revolutions. Gold. <laughs> I would support any type of complementary currency, and of course, uh, one of the gentlemen uh, had a question about the time value of money oh, in a usury-free system, and of course, banks should. Uh, should sim simply serve uh, as uh, uh, intermediaries between... All right. Both wrong, okay? Time value of money. You may think that the guy who's starved for the loan because Lenny the Loan Shark's going to break his legs tomorrow so he'll pay you interest for your 500 bucks is reasonable because you don't appreciate that he could go to the interest-free bank and get the 500 anyway. And Bill now doesn't answer. Oh. I, I would support any type of complementary currency. And of course, uh, one of the gentlemen uh, had a question about the time value of money in a usury-free system. And of course, banks should uh, should sim simply serve uh, as uh, uh, intermediaries between borrowers and, borrowers and lenders as well. No, they should not. I don't want to borrow someone else's money from the piggy bank. I want to borrow new chips from the casino cage. So again, just like the first guy is under the impression that he's borrowing the depositor's money, Bill's now back under that same impression. Let's provide up the valuable services for which we would all pay. So both forget that the things they're talking about are short-circuited the moment everybody's got their own interest-free account, right? And as far as the time value of money goes, uh, it, it is acceptable in, in all religious systems to make loans and uh, include in, uh, in uh, the amount of the loan and one time, a one-time initiation fee which would cover all of the bank's costs, including the cost of their employees, the cost of their electricity, etc., etc., but not interest per se. Uh, all okay, let's explain the dare. Oh, maybe they will. Hang on. Also, oh, isn't, that just, isn't that just another way of charging interest? And Jewish law allows for interest, by the way. I studied it. Just let me know. No, it doesn't. It allows only interest against foreigners, not against kin. You don't enslave kin. But I mean, isn't charging a free upfront, Mr. Still, even if it's if you don't call it interest, if it's not tied to the amount of the loan directly, but you're saying to cover my administrative costs, I'm going to charge you an initiation fee? I mean, isn't might that as well be interest? But it's a but it's a one-time initiation fee, and it does not compound. So uh... that's not the right answer. It's not an issue of compounding. It's the fact that you owe eleven when you got ten. The fact you don't owe 11.1, which is what compounding would do over a year, not much of a difference, uh, at the start, doesn't matter much. You ain't got it anyway, whether it's compounded interest or not. So don't duck the issue of the shortage due to interest by talking about compounding as if maybe interest is payable. It's not. 
it's it's just a way for uh, to uh, implement uh, uh, lending practices by banks uh, without uh, calling it interest. I know that the it's a subtle distinction. Uh, subtle. And I'll I don't explain it. it fully myself. I only okay. He doesn't understand it. I do. Here it is. I lend you ten dollars. You're gonna owe me eleven with interest. I gotta get paid. Now, I can lend you to 10, you can come back at the end of the year owing me 11, and you got a big problem. You only got 10. I could say, okay, just knock it off the interest and go back out with 9, and every year you end up with 1 less till you crash after 10. But I could say, sorry, I need my 11. And if not, I got to foreclose, take your stuff, sell it for what I can. So, that is usury. If you borrow 10, and at the end of the contract you owe 11, and you're short, and it can't ever be paid, that's the mortgage death gamble contract. Now, I'm the banker, I want to get paid, but I don't want to end up taking all your stuff and foreclosing and making you a slave at the end of your 10 years. I want to get paid and get my fair share and keep you going forever. So, what I say is here, tell you what, I'll lend you 10, just like before. Give me one back right away as a service charge. Up front, pay it off. You're walking out with nine. I'm paid. You owe you ten. Now, during the year, I can spend the one you paid me, and you can serve me, and I can get my earnings. And by the end of the year, you got your ten back to pay the ten you owe. So, if you pay your interest up front, like Bill still said these Islamic contracts sometimes allow, that then allows the banker to spend the money back so you can earn it and pay the total debt. That's not usury. But if you let the debt and you don't pay it up front and you just end up with more debt at the end, now you've turned your non-death gamble into a death gamble. So that's the difference between paying your interest up front, which converts it to a non-lethal service charge, and letting your debt interest be paid at the end, which gets you stuck in a death gamble, mortgage, can't escape, failure contract. All right, boys? I only know that this is allowed, uh, certainly in both the Muslim and, uh, and Catholic teachings. Catholic? So, uh, Wayne, then, in, in the system of mountain hours, you, you have, what, what do you think would, uh, would result when you have a system that is more universalizable, when you get to that critical mass. Like a lot of people setting up a Facebook Unilets account like I did. Let's presume that Facebook did it for them automatically. Just said, hey everybody, we've set up these things for you, and all you got to do is go put in your name, your address, things you want to offer, things you want to get, and then you can keep track by cutting checks and we'll run the email program for you too. Okay, 500 million people got a time bank account. Check an account. Payable in cash or in time. Like a PayPal. And, and when you have that, when you have what you're suggesting for your system to be... Well, we have it, but no one's using it. ...boards at the local level, what would be necessary for them to be sustainable? What would be a critical mass for that? To do a I trade. I just uh, finished writing a book. It's called Our Money Jubilee. And it gets into the details of basically setting up a, 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 a best practices national group to oversee audits of the local systems to uh, you know, make sure that they're following best practices. At that point, each of these hours denominated systems can exchange in the same way that we, you, know, you have timeshares, for instance. So you're just setting up a, an international barter network uh, based upon... And all you'd have to do was mention that these mutual credit systems are called LETS, and there's already a Millennium Declaration C6 for a UniLETS interest-free time-based currency. On time unit of value, and uh, basically you can eliminate all currency exchange fee parasitism. Be nice, eh, if you knew about the UniLETS worldwide system already proposed to do what he just said we should do. Um, so uh, basically an hour everywhere on the planet is the same. 
So, uh, a child hour. Of, of us setting up the database. Uh, uh, I bet you the kid complains about that. <laughs> issuing the, the paper slips and uh, all of us agreeing to partic participate. And the benefits are massive for this. Uh, just as Bill still uh, alluded to in the beginning of this, everything, the, the love of money is the root of all evil. The true sovereigns on planet or Earth are governments, uh, excuse me, are not governments, they're the private bankers. The private bankers or the money power or mammon, that is the true power on the planet and they rule the planet through usury. And uh, the means by which that we get rid of that. And usury, debts that grow, is the proverbial yoke of oppression. You know what a yoke is? Like oxen being yoked? That's what you are by your debts due to usury. Yoke of oppression. Never leave your neck. A yoke. Is when the people choose to adopt. Oh, that's a no yoke. That serves them <laughs> rather than dominates them. So. We can uh, do this. It's just a matter of us to dedicate as much time uh, and energy to this as we do to uh, the phony election process. Instead of focusing on uh, phony politicians that are merely the administers. Hey, some of us are good guys. You're just not voting for us. Of the tyranny of the private bankers. If we focus on this for a short period of time, I'm, I'm, I'm saying within six months or a year, if we truly focus on monetary reform and stop using their money, we can use our money uh, to create our own sovereign, abundant future. Well, yes, we can do it from the bottom up. But, like Bill still advocates, we can also do it from the top down. And I have run for politics to do it from the top down while having financed the original Let's software to show how we could do it from the bottom up. And over the years, now the bottom up is growing. But I'm still an advocate of doing it from the top down, too. Faster. As Charlie pointed out, there's certainly the potential for certainly. conflict between competing local systems, just one... Not if they're all based on a one-hour bill. There was no conflict between the chips in Las Vegas or one town right next door to another having one casino next door to another eventually there will be a, a universalized system of that but if that was the case why not take advantage of the system like that Bitcoin has set up where you start with a universalized standard why not start no 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 he, they haven't started with a universalized standard we don't even know what a Bitcoin is yet all we know is whatever the stock market says they're willing to pay in money. So there is no standard behind Bitcoin. There is behind time and gold and chickens, but not Bitcoin. Part with, instead of mountain hours, just the hours currency. And you, have a, you, you start out with these universalizable standards so that you don't end up with these conflicts and you start with something that is immediately adaptable without the buying of any individual community, but certain. Well, I did. I started my UniLets account that is a global scope and run by myself, and everybody else could do it too. But, but just individuals in that community wanting to sign on to that currency as you have with the advance with Bitcoins. I don't have to wait for anybody else in my town to start using Bitcoins and I don't have to wait for anybody else in my town to start using my own Unilets account, do I? Have I? To get a wallet and to get plugged in. To get my account and be plugged in. But if I want to start using an hour-based currency... Whoa, 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 whoa. Mine's an hour-based currency. He meant a paper hours-based currency. Either I have to start one myself, or I have to wait until it's actually viable in my community. Why don't you have it set up with that universalizable quality built into it? I have. Well, th th this will be a franchisable system. That's uh, what I'm getting into with the, the book. Uh, we've set, uh, just last year, we set five of these up across the country, as you know already, Adam. And um, so... What's unique about this that that's different than a Bitcoin or gold or silver is 
we can have unlimited barters. Yeah. And because if, if you can trade your time, if, uh, just as uh, the uh, Bruce Bauman here of We Are Change, they set up uh, an end the Fed event. We mm. paid them in the local currency for doing that because who's we as, here? As well, long who's we? Just like I paid myself by posting my hours protesting the banks or G20 or whatever, right? And people who look at my account will value those hours if they appreciate picketing banks. Same idea. Except it's more official. The city's saying we like what you're doing. Create value. We can issue currency to measure wait, that wait. value. Chips. Wait, wait, who is, wait, who is we? Who, who paid them with what? Because they've got a group. Ah, there's a problem. There has to be a we. But if you were doing it all alone, like me, he's asking me, who do I get to authorize me to do what I want to do? Me. And because everybody in the group could do it themselves, the fact that one may be chosen to do something special doesn't mean there's extra power out there to be feared. Issue currency backed with, with what? Labor. The, the currency cooperative votes upon in any any issuance. So we decide as a community what we value. If we value peace in the community, then we can uh, uh, pay for peace activists to yes. set up peace. Yes, I'll events. take them. Uh, think of what it is right now. That would mean I wouldn't have to go home, participate in a work bee cleaning a river, and post it at my own page. They'd do it for me. How nice. Oh, but they're doing it. Who are they? What power do they have? Same power as me to go home and post it on my page. <laughs> Think of how many people get paid uh, to uh, enslave humanity in perpetual war. There's lots of money spent rewarding war and conflict and division of humanity. Why can't we create money to reward the best parts <laughs> of humanity of peace what great and answers, eh? unity? And uh, end the Fed. <laughs> yeah. <right? So laughs> and marijuana I, prohibition. I, I got all those hours claimed. And by the way, I do. I do still have a few that I'm waiting to return to Summit County and put back into circulation. I'll take but them in Canada. If I were to hold a significant amount of hours. I'll take them. And I would then have to trust every currency board in the country to... Uh, no, you wouldn't if everybody accepts each other's chips, would you? Agree to what their standard of what is good and what is righteous. An hour isn't 60 minutes. An hour. Their standard is the same as ours. Just like in Vegas, the same standard of chips were traded everywhere. What they want to honor. And, and I really like this idea that if someone in a community is going out and is going to put on a protest or put on an event and you want to be able to compensate them, it's a great mechanism for the community to be able to say, we're going to fund this, we're going to allow, we're going to, and we're going to issue a currency and we are going to honor that currency so when the people putting this event on need to take the time away from whatever else they're doing to put this on, they can still afford to eat and pay the rent and so on. But if they're able to do that, then you're creating another institution that's like the banks. Okay, back to the fact that, geez, if everybody doesn't do it themselves, we'll need an institution for the group. Well, then do it yourselves. <laughs> Being able to decide who gets to receive newly created money, although the banks are doing it based on... Everybody the does who puts in the work and you're doing puts it, it up on their the post themselves. But either way, it's a collective where I, as someone who holds hours, then have them devalued by proportion and circulation. Ah, uh, he's stuck with shift day inflation. See how it screws up everything? Thinking that addition of money backed up by time is going to dilute the other money backed up by time. It's like a guy comes to your poker game with a new rack of chips and sits down. Do you scream, inflation? Well, no, you know he bought it at the cage and the collateral is there. Come on. So what if there's more chips issued in exchange for work? You're issuing more to whatever the pet project of this currency board in exchange for work. Well, one of the things there is like we, we, if you have the commodity view of money that yeah. you have this lump of gold, and if we create more lumps of gold, we devalue the other lumps of gold. 
I know. A, a better view of this <laughs> is that if we create more inches, that's we right. don't devalue the other inches. Good answer. And that's what happens mm. if, uh, or another view of that is if there's a, a football game and the capacity of the stadium is 100,000 seats, as long as I can create more tickets, as long as I don't create tickets in excess of the capacity of the stadium. So we should consider the capacity of the stadium the, uh, the, limit. the productive value of the community. As long as we produce more value that we believe in, then we can create more money. So Chips for the value. creation of new money doesn't devalue the uh, existing money yes. as long as new, mon new value is being created. The, the community cooperative decides what it values and then it creates currency to, uh, if that value is created, when that value is created, then currency is issued to measure it. Um, so the way uh, that we make sure that you don't get stuck, you know what I mean? Because obviously we don't want you to get stuck and we don't want anybody else to get stuck. You know, it's in our common interest as a community to make sure that that's a better way to view this is that the, the highest uh, uh, mission for a community to make sure is that their currency is valid because say for instance in Summit County, um, we have a very, very short growing season. If we miss uh, issue our currency, we, it will no longer be accepted down in Denver where they have a longer growing season. So they won't be accepting our, our paper, our, our money any longer, right? So it's essential to, for us to maintain I'm our lost. integrity of the monetary system. It's the most high order thing that we do. So. Um, just like if you're, uh, if you're issuing a gift certificate as a restaurant, if the word got out that you're issuing gift certificates as a restaurant and then you were refusing them when people came into your business, <laughs> people wouldn't ever buy a gift certificate from you again. You Bye! Know? Give me my money back! <laughs> so it's essential that we honor our contract and have integrity. What this all comes down to is freedom requires that we take the responsibility as sovereigns and stop complaining about the Federal Reserve, stop complaining about the bankers, stop complaining and say, it is our responsibility to create a system that is better than these disgusting systems that have been enslaving humanity for thousands of years. It's our... And I've decided to do both. Fix the bottom up and decry from the top down. Come on, you can do both. Responsibility to fix this and stop complaining like children. Well, do Certainly both. Do both. I really think that fix it and complain. In a lot of spots, um, oh, especially with comes. the football analogy, but I'm just trying to understand again how he thinks it was a football analogy, the stadium analogy being full. He thinks it's football. Kid, what if it was soccer? <laughs> When a community collective is issuing money to pay for a protest, how is that different from a government issuing money to pay for a war? It's not, except it's productive instead of destructive. Rewarding good behavior instead of bad behavior. Bingo. Who's to say what's good behavior and what's bad behavior? Right. Maybe it's <laughs> this kid can't figure out that if we all agree it's good, pretty good probability it's good, right? How, does he need consensus before he agrees? Oh boy, is this... Goes to show you, you know what I mean? The inferiority of the Bitcoin crowd. This good behavior, but why, what? That answer doesn't satisfy me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Still, you, I can't even believe you'd ask the question, why is it better to yeah. have a yeah. peace protest instead of a war? I know, I know. Well, no, no, the question is not which is better, the question yes, is it what was. is the mechanism by which you decide and measure you're that value. Debt. It you're was. issuing debt to the collective, you're saying the collective is worth this amount of money to another collective. You're issuing more debt, but what was the other, that collective is worth that amount of money. I mean, the United States dollar is worth, well, it's claimed to be worth for the good and credit of the United States government and its economy. But with a football stadium, like your analogy, you're growing the size of Got the football right. stadium with the United States economy. <laughs> you're growing the size of the football stadium. He was talking about the capacity crowd, not the stadium. He was talking about the crowd. <laughs> 
and supposedly what the dollar is supposed to be is that you're expanding the size of the economy. We know that's not true. The government's just printing, um, sorry, the, gov the government itself is not printing money, nor right. are banks. It's actually the Federal Reserve, but... Oh, <laughs> he doesn't know that chartered banks create money when they make loans. He thinks they're piggy banks. Oh, that's right. He thinks they're piggy banks. Oh, they're going to have to spend time correcting him now. Oh, God. It's that whole situation. And I'm just trying to understand how going from, from government-issued money to community-collective-issued money on demand, how is that different? Because... They're not! And I want them both! <laughs> the People are not issuing money. Private banks issue the money as a debt with interest. That's right. We're issuing it as a, a, a local organic. This is done on a county-wide basis. So there's that could be there's done globally. Come on. A, a, a huge amount of integrity built in just because. Wayne, the, the hold on, Wayne. Let's Wayne. Uh, before before you get back to that, let's give Mr. Still a chance to weigh in on this, please. Uh, a couple points. Uh, no, number one, uh, ending the Fed won't do anything. The Fed isn't the problem. The Fed is just a smokescreen uh, for the commercial banks. You have to end two things, and that's number one, government's ability to borrow at all. Okay. Uh, number two, the ability of banks to national reserve lending. So yeah. saying, we, you know, get, it, get behind the end the Fed movement is saying, let's get behind nothing. That's completely that's right. ineffective. That's right. Uh, number two, uh, somebody mentioned that the Fed issues the money. Ah, but. Dennis Kucinich's Bill 2990, end the Fed and replace it with the Treasury money. That's what Bill wants. Who didn't support? The Fed does not issue the money, That's with the right. exception of the recent QEs. That's Banks right. issue That's all right. money as an interest-bearing debt, just as Wayne just said, yeah. with the exception of coin. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yes, it might say Federal Reserve note on it, but it's totally a creation of commercial banks. And we have to spend time explaining it to the kid right. who doesn't know. Does that answer any of the concerns? Or of course not. Uh, no, I, I, put this in context. No. I, uh, I'm trying to understand the difference between the dollar um, and mountain hours in the respect of how it's issued. Um, just to give you uh, how Bitcoins are issued is that yeah. it's, it's pretty much a, a predictable amount of Bitcoins that are issued um, every single day. Um, I think it's about 25 Bitcoins every 15 to 20 minutes. Sometimes blocks can take a little bit longer than that. Um, and 25 bitcoins per 15 minutes. 100 bitcoins an hour. Doing what? Going where? And the people that are issued these bitcoins are being paid for their hard work, essentially. Whoa, 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 whoa. Anyways. The way that mining works is that you have to put in a certain amount of computational power, which costs... That's right. Get your computer to waste its time. Electricity, hardware, uh, and time. Oh, 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 it's in order to waste electricity, and then you can say that this is worth the wasted electricity you lost. Not bad. Jesus. I could take a dozen eggs, and I could break them, and I could say, here's a dozen credits worth a dozen eggs I just lost. <laughs> And by doing so, the more uh, power you output, the more mathematical problems and auditing you can do for the Bitcoin economy, that's how you get paid um, those new issued Bitcoin. So they're not just kind of pushed into the economy. It's as if you can go get a job as an accountant and you're being paid this, this uh, amount of Bitcoins. I would have to understand that a little bit better, uh, who, who initiates the money and how it's yeah. initiated. I, I, I must say, I don't understand Bitcoins, I don't but uh, as a complementary currency, I'm perfectly willing to, to have it exist. Go. Tell Thank us. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, it's actually not my currency. It's uh, the currency of the, of the world because the person who created it, Satoshi Nakamoto, he disappeared. No one knows who he, who he is, but once he started the blockchain, as this uh, transactional source in the payment system, he has no control over it anymore. He open sourced all of the code so everyone can read it and build on it and make it better and update if there's any security issues whatsoever. So you have this, this code that allows you to plug into a transactional system and apps... And the uh, more of your computer's time you waste. Uh, ...software all over the world um, 
plug into this and create this whole transaction system, and that's in part what gives Bitcoin its value. The amount of computer time you waste. In terms of its creation, uh, it, it seems to me uh, uh, tremendously exclusive. I mean, I, I don't understand yeah. it. I certainly can't create them. Yeah. It does yes, not seem to be a democratized form of money, but I admit that I may not understand, that I don't understand uh, how it's created in the first instance. Sure, you actually could. You can get your computer, download a Bitcoin miner, and start mining. The problem is your computer is outputting a certain amount of power, and relative to the whole network of all people doing the same thing you're doing as a whole, your chances are slim. And imagine imagine if your one computer is a lottery ticket and there's a lottery every 10 minutes. Um, the more computing power you have, the more money you can put into computers, the more lottery tickets you have, the more of a chance you have of getting a, a piece of the new issued currency. Ah, so guys with bigger computers get bigger pieces. They're fighting over the scraps that are produced on a regular amount. Ah. Then this is a this is a technological plutocracy. Uh, Bigger computer. I have to look at the definition of that, but I assume if that's what you say it is, it is. It is. Well, well how would you define technological plutocracy, <laughs> Mr. Still? Go. Uh, plutocracy uh, it is exactly what's going on today. It's uh, essentially yeah. ruled by the rich or ruled with computers. By banks and so uh, ruled by computers would be a, a, a computerized technological plutocracy. That's right. Uh, ruled by those who have computational power and That's the right. expertise to do it. That's right. <laughs> Bingo. Charlie? Wow. Yeah, but you can go and buy Bitcoin um, for the same amount, the value of it's in a dollar, or you can go work and get paid in But Bitcoin some people are way. still taking it. It's like no one's handing out free dollars, but if you work for the government, you'll get paid in their government-issued money. Oh, jeez, what the uh, yeah, but I mean, the, this is certainly for the, the bottom 25% of, or the bottom 50% of the world population, they would be totally incapable of uh, creating Bitcoin. That's right. The 25% the, the of the... Percentage they can earn them from us. us. We get them free. Mine for gold either. <laughs> Nor are they manning the printing presses wherever the money is being printed. Okay, well, I, I'd have to think about it about this. I, I hate to, to say things off the top of my head because I like to think things through. I don't sure, mind. That, no, those are basic basic things that concern me. Yeah. Carrie, do we have any more questions or challenges from the chat? Um, let's see. Someone has a question about if the Federal Reserve is irrelevant, then what about the international the Bank of International Settlements in Switzerland? They control and make the rules. Um, there's a general question for the panel. If a currency like the U.S. dollar right now becomes the global currency standard... Sorry. Was. Um, oh, racist. Sorry, okay, question for Charlie. They just wanted to comment what, on um, the exponential rise in Bitcoins right now. There's been a lot of amazing news surrounding Bitcoin and what's been going on with it lately. Um, today, actually, Reddit.com has announced that they're accepting Bitcoin as a payment option in addition to credit they cards. They got sucked um, in. <laughs> a beautiful thing of WordPress announced a few weeks ago where they were also accepting Bitcoin for payments. And they cited something very interesting. Someone asked, well, why accept Bitcoin? What's wrong with credit cards or PayPal? And they simply said, well, PayPal blocks over 60 countries. And they don't think it's right that a blogger in Syria can't pay to blog about his what's going on. I can transfer my email dollars anywhere. The government can say that people in a certain place can't uh, pay or use the, the, trip, the financial system. So that's been part of it. Also, a bunch of companies have been getting a lot of venture capital lately. Um, there have been a lot of amazing interest in Bitcoin. How they're and spending the their money and investing their free money. The, market, the more money is being pumped into the market, the more um, valuable it is and, and the price goes up. <laughs> that's why demand and speculation. Until it crashes. Yeah, you know, if, if, as you're implying your Bitcoin is actually a, a democratized form of money, then I'd be all for it. I'm all for uh, any form of truly decentralization of uh, all po power, political and financial. Well, I'm not really for a money based on wasted computer time. You know what I mean? I want my token to be worth a hat, you know, or to be worth a coat or to be worth a bus fare, or a subway ride, you know what I mean? To be worth an hour of wasted computer time? 
I can't think of anything more stupid for the basis of money than an hour of wasted time versus an hour of useful time. Holy shit. So we got guys in favor of an hour of useful time talking with a guy in favor of an hour of wasted time. Yeah, the, the goal of Bitcoin was actually, it's interesting, the, many people believe that, that government and possibly even something like collectives or banks shouldn't have the, the fiscal responsibility. If they're not going to be fiscally responsible, you need to take monetary and fiscal policy out of their hands and back in the hands of the people. And that's why Bitcoin was created. Well, if I may weigh in here for just a minute on behalf of... No, we've already got the transfer medium through the banks. They're electronic all over the world. That's covered. So, what in the world is Bitcoin possibly going to replace the government funding mechanism? How can that possibly be so? Because, I mean, this is dreamland. Of uh, the metal side of this debate. Uh -oh. It seems that there are, are very legitimate problems that all of these currencies are trying to... How am I going to email an ounce of gold around the internet? That's the problem with yellow rock. <laughs> Reps. And all of them have their strengths and weaknesses. But when I hear things like, well, we're going to eliminate usury. Well, usury can exist in a voluntary system. When we hear things like, we're going to eliminate With stupid uh, people, yeah. reserve banking, there's actually a great case in the that. market for there being something akin to what we see today as fractional reserve banking, but not controlled by a centralized fiat currency. Well, that's let's, right? You can go and borrow from your let's account, cut checks on it. The only difference is it's interest-free. That if I, as a banker, and this you can go back, and, and I'm sure Mr. Steele, you're familiar with the, the, the rise of the history, uh, through the history of the keepers of the gold vaults being able to issue notes for more gold than they had in their vaults is the first form, or at least one of the early forms of fractional reserve banking. Surely there should be a way That's that a cover this story. can happen in a voluntary system. That a lot of these evils are things that result from the centralized control, not from the mechanisms themselves, because the mechanisms are based on needs of the market, like usury, being a, a very important expression of time preference. If Except for people who have their own interest-free account at the bank, for which there is no such time preference. What moron is going to pay you interest to use your money when he can get his own? But let's pretend there are morons out there. A dollar is worth a dollar to me now, but if I, I know that I can invest it in a company and I can make 10% over a year, and if I loan it to someone, I might not get, get paid back at all, but I want to take that risk and I want to loan it to someone and get that interest back, that's something that's an important mechanism of that free market for money based on time preference. It, well, I'm not going to stop you from trying to loan shark your savings out, but who are you going to find? And if you do find somebody, maybe we will come out put a law for, you know, taking unfair advantage of the stupid. Interest provides the ability to do that. Now, okay. Bitcoin, as an independent currency, also provides uh, as something that is much more concrete in its form of value. It's much less... Um, <laughs> it's got nothing of value! Even government money based on my collateral is better than Bitcoin. Subject to the whims of a central authority, and that's one of its distinct advantages. Being uh, and it's not subject to the whims of a central authority. You can't get any without pledging collateral. They keep forgetting about the collateral at the cage. Every time they see a new guy come to the table with a new rack of chips, they go, INFLATION! And we got to slap them in the head and try to explain the cage again. These people who can't keep the two connected. Decentralized and digitized, you don't have these hazards of having to trust either a government issuing the currency or a hazards. community control board. But it also has hazards. the fall of being backed by nothing. Ah. And it would be nice to see if there was some way to combine the strengths of all of these currencies. Well, yes, take the mechanism that transfers greatly the thing backed by nothing, and then take it to transfer greatly something backed by something. 
that if there was a way to have a currency that was digitizable, that was anonymous, that had the ability to be used internationally, if you had something like that hours, but it's the not anonymous. of banks to have a monopoly, or, or, or I should say, creates the moral hazard of fractional reserve banking, that we see banks engaging in creating more money than the economy can in a, in a balanced way sustain that results... Ah, see, back with too much money in circulation. Banks are creating too much money. We can't issue no more money for paychecks. We have to cut back. Yeah, 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 Adam. See what I mean? As long as they don't understand inflation shift B, they'll never be able to know that we got to print more money if we want to have paychecks for more jobs and fight inflation. The more chips issued, backed up by work, the less inflationary effect to the government's previous lousy chips, right? Till 99% of the chips are issued by labor someday and only 1% of the government crap remains. <laughs> uh, all of the problems that we see associated with, with uh, fractional reserve banking today. If there was a way to do that uh, that was voluntary, that served the market, and if there was a way to have a, a system that allowed people to create currency as Mountain Hours does, based on value, based on uh, or, or, or created value at the community level, what the community values, that there would be a way to reward those things. And like Wayne, you said, the, you know, the, you used the idea of, a, of a, someone organizing and then the Fed rally being re rewarded by a, a community with Mountain Hours. There's clearly ways that we can do that already, and you're up against, you know, Indiegogo and Kickstarter and all these alternative free market mechanisms that are coming up to address these concerns. All of these various alternatives have their strengths and their weaknesses. Clearly, all of them beat out the Federal Reserve because they're not based... And Unilets beats out all the others. A global time bank interest-free means that no one's ever going to be loan shark to again, even by their close friends. <laughs> On some central vicious exploitation, be it Bill, as you say, through simply the smokescreen that is the Federal Reserve for the real banking powers. But gentlemen, if we could combine these basic strengths, if we had built in to a gold-backed currency, or perhaps an alternative commodity-backed currency, Wayne, couldn't we still have systems by which we are able to reward such efforts, as you suggest, without having to rely on a community-backed currency board? Mr. Still, couldn't we have fractional reserve banking under a gold-backed currency if it was entirely voluntary? And Charlie, couldn't we have these advantages of Bitcoin in a system where the currency was, instead of being backed by what many people object to, the idea of cryptography Nothing. backing it up, having some, if not gold and silver, some Ours. basket of currencies. I'll give you a chance once in order to respond to those concerns. Come on, you got Bitcoin transfer mechanism, you got hours medium of exchange, and you recommend everything but using Bitcoin for the hours. Jeez. We'll take one more chance for questions from the chat and then give you each a chance to wrap up. Wayne, if you would first, please. I think the, uh, the question was based upon uh, how, how could we do the same thing with gold and silver to reward the organizers of the In the Fed event. Um, obviously, some benefactor could do that, uh, but the, what, what, what it comes down to is in order to have a gold and silver system is you have to have you have to have money in the first place. You already have to have the wealth in the first place. So it, it ends up being a controlling system by being dependent upon this uh, commodity that's unnecessary for sustaining life. So let's not worry about the currency and let's just create the value. And if, if an individual creates the value and uh, we all agree, uh, you know, having a, educating people about the corruption of the monetary system and, and organizing an end of Fed event, that's valuable. So we uh, issued currency after they held the event. They already created the value. We then issued the currency to reward that value as... And he could have put end of the Fed hour and more people would take it. ...to credit. So that couldn't 
be done. We, you can't, uh, uh, you, you know, nobody needed to have gold and silver in order That's to right. reward that value. Or Bitcoins. Because the, and that really gets down to the paradigm that we have right now yes. is that Federal Reserve notes are scarce right now. Why would we want to go to something that's even more scarce than Federal Reserve notes in the form of gold, silver, or bits? So um, what we need is abundant money, but not uh, money that's uh, more abundant than the value that's been created. We don't want to over-issue the uh, currency. Okay. So uh, that is, uh, that's the paradigm shift, is to realize that it's it, or for our entire lives we've always lived with scarce money because we live in the usury system. Any usury based monetary system will our debts will always exceed the money supply. It's a mathematic fraud. That that's the real reason why usury is the problem is it it creates contracts which are unpayable and uh, it's not just um, what we want to eliminate is the force of government and the fraud of usury-based contracts because usury creates a mathematic fraud the same way a Ponzi is a fraud. Uh, in, in either one of those paradigms, it creates victims with certainty. Sure, but they're different. You know, Ponzi is basically a scam where you're taking in money at the bottom to feed the guys at the top until the bottom stops and there's a crash. And so it's not the same thing as a death gamble where somebody gets knocked out and they strip the loser clean and leave him to die. Mr. Still? Well, you, you mentioned uh, <clears throat> that, that gold is a, a money that serves the market. And, of course, uh, I wonder what you mean by serving the market, because to me, money should serve the public interest. And certainly in today's world, the market does not operate in the public interest. Uh, gold is, is a scarce form of money that's easily controlled. That's why bankers throughout the 1800s attempted uh, to force America onto a gold-only money system. And before. Uh, even, even going so far as to legally forbidding the minting of silver dollars as as a, a complementary currency because uh, silver was in plentiful supply at that point. Uh, we were on a gold-only money system during the Great uh, Depression of the 1930s. We were on a gold-only money system during the even greater post-Civil War Depression, which lasted for 30 years and uh, reduced the amount of current of money in circulation by some 84 percent during those 30 years. So any type of commodity-based uh, money uh, <clears throat> is highly manipulatable, uh, even a basket. Except if the commodity is human time. Of, uh, of commodities. Uh, for, in order for uh, a, a currency, a, a sovereign national currency to serve the public interest, uh, it has to have uh, two characteristics. It has to be valueless and it has to be ubiquitous. Uh, so that's that's really all, all I have to say about it. Uh, you know, currencies that uh, a, cur a currency must serve the public interest, uh, not the interest of the so-called market. Charlie, um, why was it said that money is scarce, uh, dollar bills are scarce, when the money supply I think has gone from like four hundred billion dollars to Good over eight hundred billion dollars in the past since year two thousand. There's there are over double the amount of dollar bills uh, in the economy right now uh, in circulation. So I don't think that dollar bills are scarce. Um, uh, did you get any kid? <laughs> I do think though and I and I disagree, uh, I think you're um, with what you said that money shouldn't be something that uh, is a a commodity. Um, my my argument, or some of the things that I don't like about, um, not to say that I don't like now and hours, because I think it's an unbelievable idea, but I think some of the, the downfalls of it is that the fact that it, it represents hours that aren't a, um, that you can't commoditize, that they're an asset that can't be, um, because a janitor's hour is not as valuable as the hour of a doctor. Um, I know hours are 60 minutes, but you have to... And of course... When a doctor is cleaning a park with his son on a weekend on a work bee, he's earning one hour per hour like the kid is, a volunteer and everybody else. But when he's in his surgery, he can command ten hours per hour. So, 
Some people just cannot grasp the idea of the child hour being the numeraire, which now permits the different values of other people's hours in standard hours, like this kid here. There's a free market for the value of the hours. Um, I think that there, it, it gives the idea to, to widespread fraud and, and corruption by the, the issuing entity. Um, I also think that there probably isn't enough, I don't know how much is in circulation, maybe like $50,000 worth when it, there are over 21 million Bitcoins that are going to be in circulation. Um, and in the dollar equivalent right now, that's over $300 million. Wow, we've got 300 million backed by nothing dollars, and you've only got 50,000 backed by work hours. <laughs> Just in the past three years. So it's like kind of the opposite of what you're saying is what's actually true. All right, Carrie, before we give them a chance for their final rebuttals and closing statements, do we have any questions from the chat that we could ask all three of our panelists? Um, well, there has been talk about what is the public interest, and there's been some questioning of that. Like, how do you determine that, and why should you trust someone who says just because it's for the public interest, it's good? That's a great question. We're going to give that to each one of our panelists, if you would, in just a minute. And in terms of your background to bring to this debate, how do you define the public interest? We'll go in the opposite order this time. Charlie? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. When, when you talk about Bitcoins being in the interest of the people to adopt, how do you define the public interest? Well, if you're not interested in it, you don't have to use it. Um, it's completely voluntary. You have to get involved, um, and you can buy into it or work for it. Um, and the beauty of Bitcoin is that you don't have to trust a government, or you don't have to trust a collective. Like the, the You've got nobody to trust. To say that this is the company <laughs> You've got the nobody to blame. That's what Bitcoin is all about, that it's fully decentralized, <laughs> and there's no trust in one central authority. Because I, I, I personally believe, and I think many people believe, is that um, we all, not, a, not a, a lot of us don't trust the government right now, but there was a point that we did trust the government, and there's a point that we trust the collective or, or a credit union or a bank now, but there may be a point that we don't trust. At the end of the day, People are can be trustworthy now, but in 10, 100, 200 years from now, different people can be not trustworthy. So you have to build a system that's going to be consistent over hundreds of years. And putting trust in one company, government, or central authority is the opposite direction. Still, we should have no authority. Well, the class definition of in the public interest is uh, doing the most good for the most uh, number of people. But I would add to that that it... it uh, maximizes decentralization of power to the <clears throat> greatest extent which is practical. So it's a, it's a fuzzy, where the line is, is a fuzzy area, but uh, that's the way I define it. And Wayne? I would say it's uh, freedom from force of government, uh, or any force, or fraud of usury. Um, we, we, we have to really get our minds around that, that this is extremely important. It's not just a matter of it's my right to loan money or whatever. Um, ultimately, if, uh, if currency, if, if 10 people issue loans for $100,000 a piece of gold without fractional reserves, even at 1%, it, the bankers can create a paradigm where it's impossible for all of those borrowers to pay off that debt. Death That's gamble. The reason why usury is fraud. It, it creates a paradigm where contracts become unpayable. So uh, That's not the fraud. public interest in my mind is freedom from force no, and freedom from the fraud of usury. What is the word for an impossible contract you that you sign with open eyes? We'll give the first word to you. Go ahead, please, sir. Uh, um, if money is created in public interest, uh, it's the most important power of a sovereign government, government is to uh, issue, uh, issue the nation's money and control the value thereof. That's the, basically the wording in Article 1, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution. Um, the two basic things that, that need to be done, number one, most importantly, is governments should be uh, not, not just can control uh, the level of their debt, uh, government borrowing should be completely eliminated. Uh, if governments could not borrow, then uh, they would have to face From outside the banks. voting electorate immediately because uh, they would have to raise taxes on people immediately uh, to cover their spending. And where would they get money if they didn't borrow? 
they'd have to run their own bank and borrow from their own bank. But they would have to bank their own game. They have to bank the game. So, where are they going to get the chips if they don't borrow the chips with a marker from their own bank? The, uh, they're overspending. Uh, so, I really don't think that, you're, that you can have any uh, significant reforms uh, until you eliminate the ability of governments to borrow. That's the most important thing to me. No, or give them the right to create their own chips, same way of the, On the part of private bankers. And uh, you have to have a, a, a general atmosphere amongst the people, uh, understanding how, how money is created. And, and we've, seen, we've seen this misunderstanding demonstrated yeah. right here on this show. That's right. Uh, the government does not create the, the money. money. Yeah, yeah. The Federal Reserve does not create the, the money. money. The commercial banks create the all money. money as debt, with the exception of coins. Uh, and we heard another argument that... Keep uh, saying it, Bill. The ...increase in, in currency, about the increase in currency. Currency is a very small uh, proportion yeah. of any national money supply. Almost all money, is certainly over 90% in every nation... Computer credit. Uh, is, ...is credit money created by commercial banks. And computers. Mr. Schramm, your final thoughts. Um, I agree with everyone. I think we all agree on the same thing, that... People need to better understand um, how money is created in their specific country because in all countries it's, it's different. Because he doesn't um, I understand. I think that governments need to spend a lot less and there needs to be a lot better fiscal responsibility and transparency. And remember, I want government to spend a lot more for a lot more programs to take a lot more care of us for which I can earn bigger money and pay bigger taxes for the greater care I got. I do believe that competition is a good thing. So having competing alternative currencies is something that's great, um, and having... Actually, no. Your Bitcoin is distracting people from the Unilets alternative, the big one, and from starting up LET systems. You're stealing all the news and giving community currency a bad name. Either get a better medium or shut down. Currencies that are uh, fiat, sovereign-based, um, and alternative currencies that are your stuff. could coexist and work together um, and have value to each other different ways around the world. And Dang. Mr. Walton, we'll give you the last word of our esteemed panel tonight. Go ahead, please. <laughs> well, I want to thank you guys for hosting this. This is uh, essential. Uh, the most important issue for people to understand is the monetary system. Um, and I, I want for us to kind of raise our game and to challenge yourselves to go higher and you know what we commonly think is that we have to go through this massive collapse and this calamity in order for you know for the sleepers to uh, come to their senses and start listening to us aware people um, all we have to do the, 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 the entity which controls the, the planet the, the private bankers it's a very small number of people by controlling the monetary system they control all the governments on the planet it's just a very small number of people and they do it in, in it's they have scarce money it's very federal reserve notes are scarce uh, that's the reason why foreclosures are so high um, is because there isn't enough money in, in, to, in circulation to pay all the debts so by creating a, a greater system of rewards, if we, when we reward people for good behavior, they will gravitate to our side. We can basically buy their allegiance, and this was what was done uh, during uh, you know, ancient history, is through a universal debt jubilee, is to, rather than focus on what divides us, let's focus, as we are all debt slaves, let's focus on emancipating ourselves by each other's allegiance, let's forgive our debts, unify, and under a new currency system that creates greater abundance than... Bigger? I'm sorry. Forgive our dishonorable debts. I'm going to pay my honorable debts for stuff I got. ...in the, the dominant system. By doing this... Uh, we don't have to go through a collapse. We can make, we can bottom out 
right now. Yeah. Uh, if, if we were to just snap our fingers and tomorrow commit to using a different currency that was more abundant okay. and serve humanity rather than enslave humanity, mm -hmm. we can have victory very, very quickly. We don't have to have a collapse. We have to get out of that mindset yeah. that they are all powerful. It's just like The Wizard of Oz, just like Bill Still's book. It's just a, a few men behind a curtain. We don't have to be afraid of them. Well, gentlemen, it's been an honor to have you on tonight, and I just want to say it's great to see that this conversation is even possible, that those of us who see the problem, who want to escape the exploitation of the current monetary system, are able to have a conversation like this, we're able to put our heads together, and one way or another, the days of the Federal Reserve note are numbered. And we are coming together to make it happen. Gentlemen, I'm so glad to be joined by all of you tonight. Thank you so much. We're going to be having both, or all, excuse me, all three of you back on as these issues become relevant. Charlie, it's been great to have you on as our, as our representative for Bitcoin. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Still, being able to, to bring your historical understanding to this debate has been most valuable. And, and Wayne, for all of the, uh, the holes that Austrians try to poke in mountain hours, I challenge any of them to put in the legwork that you have to actually get people investing in and working in a functional way with an alternative currency. Of course, for my part, uh, as an advocate of, of gold and silver as an alternative, I don't think that particular status quo of the liberty movement needs to be underscored anymore, but we can see in this conversation the various strengths and weaknesses of all these alternatives lined up one against another, but we can tell one way or another they are all far superior to getting screwed over by the current system. Thank you so much. Actually, the only weakness in Wayne's mountain hours was that he couldn't email his hours globally like I do, right? Otherwise, the Bitcoin kid wouldn't be able to say, oh, we're global, we can do trades globally, and you can't. Nah, 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 nah. I can. Sure, join us. And uh, we're going to be doing more of these in the future. All right. Whew. Uh, we that's enough. Institute. Okay, so that's the great monetary reform debate. If you didn't laugh along, well, you got a lot of learning to do. And uh, if you did laugh along, well, you certainly got an education because a lot of things were covered over this thing. But again, the answer seems to be using the Bitcoin technology transfer medium to transfer hours around, like I'm already doing with my email, but just more officially and in a more official database. So you just wait until the Unilet's time bank gets united and big, and it'll put the Bitcoin based on nothing money to shame. And well done, Bill and Wayne.